Is that okay? Is that big enough for you guys there? Um, so we're going to start our actual unit here on physics today, of course. Uh, the first unit, our first lesson was just kind of like a little bit of review of scientific notation, significant digits. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some different types of motion here today. Uh, it says here, we can analyze the motion of, of an object if we compare the object's position to another point called the reference point. Uh, motion occurs when an imaginary line joins the object to the reference point, changes in length or direction or both. Okay, so you just got to copy that in there uh, real quick there. Got that? Yes. Okay. Um, good. Okay. So again, we're just going to basically pick a point and then we're going to pick another point and we're going to kind of reference those two points and see how things have changed over that period of time. Okay. Um, uniform motion. Uniform motion means constant or no change. Okay. Maybe put that in brackets somewhere. Uniform motion occurs when an object travels at a constant rate of motion, constant speed in a straight line. An example, a car is traveling at 100 kilometers an hour in a straight line. For motion to be uniform, both speed and direction must be constant. So just copy down those. Uh, so average speed is the speed of an object describes the distance an object travels in a given time, time interval. Uh, the speed of an object is, can be considered uniform if it does not change and the object continues to move in the same direction. The average speed of an object is calculated using the total distance traveled in a specified time period. It's called the average because, of course, the speed may fluctuate. So next it says here, consider a car. On average, a car may be traveling at 100 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour for a two-hour trip, but of course the speed may have fluctuated throughout the trip. What would be some reasons for a car uh, fluctuating speed over uh, that time? Yeah. Um, like the speed limit changes. Speed limit changes. Sure. What else? Yeah. Going up and down hills. Up and down hills. What else? Yeah. Wind. Okay. Uh, traffic. Right. Uh, maybe slowing down for a uh, town, right? You can't uh, go 100 kilometers for the entire time, of course. Uh, things like that. Yeah. Weather conditions. Sure. Weather conditions, etc. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, uh, let's take a look at a formula that's going to help us find this average speed. Okay. Now the formula is going to look a little something like this here. Okay. Uh, the formula for average speed is the average speed is equal to the distance traveled over the time elapsed. Make sure you write that down, please. So write down uh, this part here. Go ahead and write out the word equation for that part right there. Or not the word equation, but you know what I'm saying. I don't think I can erase that. Oh, I think I can, but... Um, write that down to start with. And then we'll talk a little bit about... I'll let you guys just actually copy that. And then uh, we'll talk about each one of those and how we're going to use those and what they mean. So... Again, we're going to look at the distance traveled over the time that it's taken. Okay, uh, this little triangle thing here means delta. Of course, maybe you've seen that before. Yeah, um, delta basically means change in. Okay, so uh, the average speed is equal to basically the change in the distance over the change in the time. Okay, uh, change in distance, how far you go and how long it's going to take. Okay, uh, you could also do like d final minus d initial, so the the final distance minus the initial distance. So let's say, for example. You know, if you started at zero, at a point zero right here, and you go two meters that way, okay, well, obviously two minus zero is two, yes, I've traveled two meters. But if you started at like mile marker 40, and you went to mile marker 30, 53, then that'd be a 50 minus 43 kind of thing, or 53 minus 40, or whatever I said. That would be the difference in the, in the distance, yes, kind of thing. So that's all they're saying, just basically the change in the distance, okay? over the change in the time, okay? Uh, delta T is the change in time, delta D is the distance, and then we got a couple examples here to do real quick, so let's do, go ahead and do those now on uh, this sheet here. So it says here, example one, a person walks 10 meters away. I would suggest that you guys go through and label these things. So what is 10 meters away? What is that going to be? Is that going to be, your options, of course, are V, 
uh, delta D and delta T, yes? So what do you think that's going to be? Which are those variables in D? Delta D, absolutely, 10 meters, okay? So 10 meters. Um, from a stop sign in five seconds, what's that five seconds going to be? Somebody? Yeah, anyone? Delta T. Yeah, delta T, so five seconds. And it says here, what's the average speed? So we're obviously looking for V, yes? Okay? Um, so we're kind of looking at that formula there. The formula looks like this, of course, like I said before, delta D over delta T. We already have it solved for V. We have it solved for speed, okay? Uh, so therefore, we're just going to put these numbers in, 10 meters, and we're going to divide it by 5 seconds. And units are very important in this, uh, well, they're always important, but especially in this unit as well, it's kind of back to like the chemistry thing, grams and grams per mole and stuff. We still want to make sure we have units, so dividing these two, it's going to be 2.00 meters per second. Okay? Three significant digits, because there's three in the question, so don't forget that. Okay, we still have to use significant digits. That's why we did lesson one, of course, just to make sure. A uh, little reminder on significant digits. Three and three, we're dividing, so we're going to have three. Yes? Okay? So just don't, I, when you type this into the calculator, you're going to get two. Okay? Don't forget, you got to put 2.00. Okay? So that's example one there. Good? Questions, anyone? Okay. Uh, next, let's take a look at this one here. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, next one. Uh, how long will it take a car to travel 83 kilometers an hour and 36 to drive 36 kilometers? So again, uh, we're going to be focusing on this formula here. Uh, what do we got here? What's 83 kilometers an hour? What is that going to go? V, delta D, or delta T? What do you think? V. Okay, so let's put that in there. 83 kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, and then where's the 36 going to go? What's that? Delta D, so 36 kilometers. Okay, and it says how long, right? So that's what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, by the way, before I even get to that part, what should my answer be in? What's what are the units that my answer is going to be in? Oh, hours. Kilometers per hour, kilometers, yes. Or my answer is going to be in hours, yes. That's something that we need to, to, to uh, keep in mind here as well, because we will eventually have to change it to minutes, perhaps four seconds down the road. I think. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to start with our formula here, of course, delta D and delta T, and we are looking for delta T, right? So again, remember, we have to solve for delta T. So I would say let's multiply by delta T here and delta T here. That'll get rid of that, okay? And then we need to get delta T by itself. So to get delta T by itself, right now I have this. And again, if you're not great at math, my suggestion is you take this one step at a time. I can give you another option for this as well. We can do a cross multiplication. But I'm going to get rid of V and get rid of V, right? So that's what I should end up with. The overall formula here should be delta T is delta D over V, yes? Like so. Good? Yes, no? It's really important that we make sure we get the right, uh, we're dividing the right stuff here, like the right numbers on top. Because if we flip it over, obviously we're going to get like the reciprocal of what we should get. Uh, delta D was what, 36 kilometers? And this was uh, 83 kilometers an hour, yes? And delta T here, if I divided those two, uh, let's see, uh, should be... Thirty-six divided by eighty-three. Um, 0. 0.4337 uh, hours because kilometers and kilometers will cancel, and then the hours will actually come to the top because it's dividing by a uh, fraction kind of thing, so they come to the top. Significant digit-wise, how many should I have in this question? Two. Two. Okay. So point, I guess, 0. 0.43 hours. Yes. 0.43 hours. If you wanted to change it to minutes, what would you do? Yeah. Multiply by 60. Yeah. And if you want to change it to seconds after that, what would you do? Multiply by 60. Multiply by 60 again, yes. Okay. Um, so we might have to do that in some of these questions here. 
but uh, we'll get to that part eventually. Yeah. Do you want to go straight from hours to seconds, but you multiply by 360? No, 3600. Oh, okay, 360. Yeah. Okay, good. Questions, anyone? Okay. And. Last one here, okay. Uh, a plane is flying at 703 meters per second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and label that as uh, V, yes. And again, when you do these questions, I would suggest maybe just, you know, underline it or put above it or something like that. This is V, right? I'm just making this list here because I don't have the question handy here, but V. Um, and the distance, what distance would the plane fly? So what distance would the plane fly? in two minutes, delta T, two minutes, okay? All right, um, now, again, pretty quickly, we should understand that these two units do not want match up, right? So this is gonna be the first thing that I probably should look at, is saying, well, I can do all the stuff I wanna do, but at some point here, I'm gonna have to make sure units match, okay? And it says that at the bottom here, watch your units, right? So. I guess, let's see, we're trying to solve, let's start with this, first of all. We're trying to solve for delta D, the distance, so I would multiply both sides by delta T. Boom, boom, and delta T here. And it looks like I got delta D by itself, it's on the top, so good, okay? So delta D would be the velocity times delta T, or sorry, not the velocity, the speed, velocity, don't, if they didn't hear me say it. Speed, speed, velocity is different. That's different. We're getting to that. I get excited about velocity. All right. Uh, so V is what? Uh, 703 meters per second. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put this two minutes in here for now. And again, at this point, we need to say, okay, I cannot multiply those two numbers right now because they, the units don't match up. Okay, so we're going to have to switch one. Most people would probably, it doesn't matter which one you switch but most people would probably pick this one to switch, okay, because it's a little bit easier than trying to deal with the 703 meters per second. It's not a big deal, but whatever. Uh, two minutes, of course, would be what? 120 seconds, yes? And uh, to, what, 60 minutes, or 60 seconds in a minute, yes? And there's two of them, so just multiply that by 60, I guess. Um, if you want to, you could set up a little ratio, so if you were like, two minutes times one minute has 60 seconds, kind of like that. If you wanted to, you could do that, whatever, okay? Um, I guess just make sure you go the right way with that and don't screw it up kind of thing. Uh, multiplying those two numbers, I get what? Um, 703 and 120 is 84,360. Oh, uh, that's not it. 84,360. And the seconds would cancel with the seconds, of course, that's what we want to happen. If you don't change it to seconds, of course, that's not going to happen. And then what are my units going to be for delta D here? I have no idea what they're going to be because nothing's going to cancel. It's not going to make any sense. So this would be in meters, of course. Now, uh, significant digits, okay? Um, the two minutes should be a constant, yes? We talked about that yesterday. So the two minutes is actually infinite. Kind of thing. Two minutes when they say two minutes or two seconds, that's an infinite amount of time. So really come down to the 703 meters per second. So that's three. So I probably should have three here. So I go eight. No. <laughs> eight. Nope. Let's try that again. 8.44 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, I guess. Or, I mean, you could also do something like this, I guess. Uh, so that's an option. It doesn't say, obviously, so, you know, it's kind of up to you. Uh, but at times, perhaps, maybe you want to change it to kilometers, right? Uh, if you can kind of get away with that, you can do that, too. So 84.4 kilometers would be an option as well. Either one of those work, as long as you have three significant digits. Okay. Um, because if you're changing it to kilometers, of course, you want to put the decimal what, one, three, three places over. You don't want to put it there kind of thing. So if you're going to put the decimal there, of course, that'd be 84.4 kilometers. Yes. Or, like I said, uh, the other option there as well. Okay?
All right. Good question. Yeah. So, for two being a constant for future reference, how do we tell if something's a constant? Well, something like two minutes on uh, 